Okay, in this uh, very simple tutorial, uh, I'm going to show you how to use Blender to composite a uh, 3D element onto a 2D photograph. Now, first of all, uh, make sure that your Blender software is set up properly. Um, just move your cursor over here, left mouse click and drag and pull it down. Make sure you turn down, turn turn on the uh, view name, and uh, for your view rotation, you can turn on uh, trackball and around selection. For those of you who are very confused with selecting with the uh, right mouse button, then you can have the option of uh, activating the left mouse button. And also make sure your mouse wheel, your smooth view is set at 500. Okay, and uh, then ready to go. So once you're done with this, you can uh, move the cursor down here, left mouse click, drag, and push it back. Okay, so uh, once your settings is done, I suggest you go to file and then uh, save as the uh, default settings. Alright? Okay, so now first we want to bring in the image. So to do that, first of all, just click on the view here and activate this background image. And uh, click on this button, use background image. So now we're going to bring in the image that we're going to composite on. Hold down to your control key first, then click left click on load so you can activate the uh, thumbnail mode navigate to the uh, location of your images and in this case gonna use, I'm gonna use this image just middle mouse click on it and it will load it uh, instantly I'm gonna reduce the blend a bit uh, make sure you can still see the grid lines through the image okay and then I'm gonna split this view into two so for the for this view, over here, I'm going to uncheck Use, so I don't see the image on this one. Then I can minimize this uh, show background image. Okay, next, what I want to do is I want to create a empty object. I'm going to minimize, click, and tumble around this. Okay, uh, for the time being, I'm going to switch to front view. You want to move this cube until it's about this location, where the bottom is aligned with the uh, red axis line here. Because this grid line is going to represent our ground level. Okay, I'm going to press Z to change the wireframe mode. And uh, make sure your disk cursor is at the center. If, if it's in another location, just press Shift C, the cursor should jump back. Um, what you want to do is, you want to create a MT. So tap the space bar and add a MT. And uh, you want to track the camera to follow this MT. Okay, this MT is similar to the locator in Maya and the dummy in 3 Studio Max. So in this sequence, select the camera first, hold down to your shift and right mouse click and select the uh, locator. Press Ctrl T and then choose the track tool constraint. Now once this is activated, you'll notice that the empty, all right, or rather the camera is following where the empty is going. Okay. For this view, move your cursor over here and click on it and uh, press zero to switch to the uh, camera view for this I can just minimize and now with the uh, locator and the or the locator tracked to the camera uh, alignment is a little bit easier okay so what you can do is uh, you can right mouse click and select the camera okay by just clicking on the border here then you can press G and you can just tumble around until the uh, horizon right is close to the ground in the photograph next you can select the um, locate the, the what the empty. Okay, I keep calling it locator, uh, but it's the same. So you can move it down until you can see the grid line is following the uh, the horizon. Okay, but uh, in some cases you notice uh, some of the horizon right is tilted at an angle like this one. So if you want to roll the angle, you can select the camera and then you can just press R here. But you notice I cannot roll the camera at all. Okay, that's because our influence, our track influence is set at 100%. So with the camera selected, okay, click on the uh, object. And on the extreme right, there's a constraints panel. Under the influence, is set at maximum 1. Okay, I need to reduce it down to 0.8. So this time, if you press R, you can actually rotate the, uh, the camera. Okay, although the horizon now has risen up a little bit, so all you have to do is select the locator and then just bring it down and essentially I think our orientation is correct but let's say we want the box right to max the or match the orientation of the building just select the camera go to the camera view here press G and then you can just pan and move until 
the orientation matches the build, building. Okay, you can also try to move this up and down until you get a perfect alignment. Okay, I'm going to press R to just... Sorry, I'm going to select the camera first, then I'm going to press R to rotate until the ground level matches. So, right now, the cube, the perspective is matched to the view. Okay, it is very important to make sure that the camera Okay, where well, the the camera that take, has taken this image, if, uh, that you know the focal length, right, and uh, the type of lens that is being used, because you can select the camera, and then go to the uh, the edit editing panel at uh, the buttons panel here, and then you can change what type of lens that you are using. So it's it's important that you match this so that there's not much distortion. So once you have lined this, you can do a test render. Okay, if you were to just hit render by pressing F12, okay, this is what you get. All right. Um, you notice that the uh, backside here is much brighter. And if you compare to the photograph, right, uh, this is much more diffuse light. Okay, we got one lamp here, so you can actually select the lamp by. Okay, in my case here, I'm gonna left mouse click, right mouse click, select it, and I'm also gonna in this window here turn on the textured mode. So that I can see okay, the, the shading of the light. So now I'm gonna press F12 to, to render it again. Okay, now I look somewhat better. Okay, what if I want to render straight with the image in the background? Okay, first of all, let's check the size of this background image. It is 640 by 480. So you need to go to the uh, the scene, scene settings, and uh, set it to 640 by 480. And the default for PC here is really 640 by 480. Okay, and then um, if you want to render this image, you need to activate the back buffer here. So first of all, hold on to the control and then click on the file open. And again, navigate to the folder that contains your image. Middle mouse click on it. And then check on this little grey box here. So this time, if I were to hit render, press F12, you notice that the cube now uh, part of this image okay and the perspective is uh, is correct okay so um, why why is this useful because um, we can actually composite other 3d elements into this scene and it will match the perspective okay I'm gonna get rid of this default cube this X, and I'm gonna show you what I mean I'm gonna bring in a sports car okay this one is a little bit big so I'm gonna Select the group. Okay, select group. Okay, objects of this of the, in the same group. So shift G. Okay, and then I'm going to scale this down, and I can bring it down, and you can see clearly see that. Okay, I'm going to move to this view. Just make sure that the car is on the ground level. Okay, you can clearly see the. Uh, Make it slightly bigger so it matches the scale of these guys here. Okay, so you can see once the uh, perspective is matched properly, okay, no matter where you place the car, you will match the perspective of the entire scene here. Now let's let's do a test render. I press F12 to do a render, and this is the result. Okay, it's not too bad, but the lighting is a bit off, and because of the rendering environment is blue, that's why it's reflecting a lot of blue. So I'm going to the uh, materials button under the world panel. I'm going to change this to a bit more of a bit of grayish tone to match the scene. And the lights, okay, there's so far only one light. I'm going to duplicate another light. Right mouse click to select one light. Press Shift D to duplicate another light. And then bring it down. And the energy, I'm going to bring it down to about 0.27 so that this area is not so uh, dark. So I'm going to press F12 again to render. And you can see now the car seems to be part of the environment. So this is how you uh, composite and render the image. But uh, if you want to save it, okay, the shortcut key is F3. So press F3 and uh, just give it a name. All right. Okay, and uh, you can save it as a JPEG. I'm gonna save it onto the D drive. this folder. Okay, that's it. Let's 